In 2011, Jonathan Che, co-founder of Irrational Games, established a new indie studio named Blue Manchu. Among its members were several veterans of the iconic Looking Glass Studios, and its mission statement was to make innovative strategy games, titles the developers themselves would love to play. In an interview with Gama Sutra, Che called them Nishi Genre Games. The team's first release was Card Hunter, which combined the systems of a deck-building title with the mechanics of a tabletop board game. In many respects, it was the exact kind of project you'd expect from the studio. It's sleek, it's focused, and it falls well within the niche genres Blue Manchu set out to toy with. But now we have Void Bastards, the team's sophomore effort and a drastic departure from its indie debut. Unlike Card Hunter, it does not focus on one or two niches, but a slew of them. It's a genre chameleon, bouncing between categories at a breakneck pace. It defies any simple labels, and it is fantastic because of it. Owing to the way it so effortlessly jumps between genres, Void Bastards is extremely difficult to classify in one sentence. But let's give it a try. This is a sci-fi strategy shooter with roguelike elements and immersive sim complexity. Even now, there are things I couldn't get across in that description. The way Void Bastard stresses stealth, for instance, without really telling you it's a stealth game, or how its shooting elements have a throwback feel to them, harkening back to id Software's glory days on 90s PCs, or even the way Permadeath forces you from one character to the next, granting you different personality traits recalling the ancestry system of Rogue Legacy or the more recent Prey Mooncrash DLC. It's important to note that Void Bastards isn't an example of the kitchen sink approach. It's not like Rage 2, the open world shooter that feels like two completely separate games. It doesn't add mechanics or mash systems together just to extend its features list. Here, everything has a purpose. Take this mission for example. I'm about 15 hours into the game at this point with myriad upgrades that have carried over from previous characters. My current protagonist, Murphy, is in a tough situation. Because of Murphy's numerous upgrades and weapons, I was able to skip over a handful of early missions. Unless I needed food, fuel, or other essential items, I was content to breeze toward the more difficult heists, featuring more powerful enemies and, of course, more useful loot. Because of Murphy's infiltrator characteristic, I could see that this medical ship would be full of enemies called Zex. I could also see that the power would be off on arrival. These simple facts, that I would be boarding a powered-down medical ship full of shielded enemies, told me a lot. They influenced my equipment loadout. I opted to bring proximity mines to get behind those Zex shields. They influenced how much food I ate before boarding. Seeing as how it was a medical ship, I could recover health without digging into my personal sandwich supply. And finally, they influenced my actual route through the ship. With the power off, I would need to head to the generator first, or miss out on numerous loot caches behind electronic locks. But not only does Void Bastard's potent mix of strategy, shooting, and role-playing affect my planning, it also, of course, affects the execution of that plan. And in Void Bastards, the gap between planning and execution is a mile wide. I might be planning a quiet sneaking mission through a specific set of corridors, but oftentimes that will devolve into frantic improvisation when a security camera detects me and activates a powerful security bot and I don't have the ability to hack it yet, so I spend the rest of the mission trying to get to the security center to deactivate the bot and his friends. But instead, I end up surrounded by Zex and I come this close to dying and moving to the next character, but instead, I make it to the airlock with almost no loot and even less health. Then, I breathe a sigh, and I plan for the next thrilling mission. All of this is to say that it's refreshing to play a game that understands how genres can complement one another. I already mentioned the harsh dichotomy of Rage 2, but this feature clash is an epidemic in modern game design. Titles such as Days Gone, Kingdom Hearts 3, or Far Cry New Dawn, while fine in their own rights, often have ancillary activities that don't always figure into the game's overarching identities. Void Bastards, though, has almost no fat whatsoever. Its quote-unquote back-of-the-box features list is extensive, but not at all excessive. To use Jonathan Che's earlier quote, he and his team have made a genre game, but ironically, it is not niche -y. It runs the gamut from classic shooters to immersive role-playing games, and there are qualities here that many people will like. But Void Bastards does not pander. It's an excellent game from an intelligent team that is only beginning to show its skill.